this house, I understand, it's not the first time this house has been flooded. Uh, no, not at all. This house flooded in April 2012 when we had the last floods. Those floods lasted for 11 months. Uh, the poor people who live here, they just about got the house cleaned up, uh, you know, got all the water out, the walls dry, plastered, and now look what's happened. They have the same thing all over again. It, it's really sad and there's a lot of people around this part of the world that are going through the same thing right now. Uh, rain and the weather has been exceptional though the last six weeks. There's nothing to be done about that. Uh, no, that's not true. That's the story of the Environment Agency. Uh, you will know that in Holland you had the same amount of rain over the last six weeks that we've had in England. There's no flooding in Holland and this area around here looks like a lake. Uh, it's, it's not exceptional weather. Before Christmas we had just two days of rain and the Yo Valley, we're by the River Yo now, all this area flooded on just two days of rain. Now of course that rain caused floods, the water sat on the fields, it didn't get taken away because the river system does not work. So when more water comes along it just exacerbates a problem that's already there. So it builds water on water on water and eventually you have this lake land that we have today. So what's the real problem? The real problem here is that we are living in a managed landscape. It's carefully calibrated so that the rains and the drainage ditches flow into the river, take the water away. There are fields that are designed to hold water as mini floods. We all accept that flooding is part of our lives here. What is different is the scale on which the flooding is happening. These are, uh, when this is working properly, the water will be taken away with each rainfall and the landscape will get the occasional flood, but nothing like on the scale that we have here now. How long will this water take to clear? This will take two or three months before they've managed to pump it all back into the river system. And you'll notice that actually a lot of the banks around here are raised. So you are actually pumping the water uphill to get it into the river channel as the level of water lowers with the pumping. Yeah, what does it mean to the farms here? It means that effectively for the second year running there won't be a crop uh, certainly over the summer months. Uh, last year the Environment Agency tried to tell us they could not dredge until October, November. And that is usually true because that gets in the way of harvesting for the farmers. But last year there were no crops to harvest. So we asked the question, why did they not dredge until October and November? Because then they did so little work that it was all but pointless. But we live in a time of austerity and budget cuts. Even the Environment Agency is suffering from that. Is that then the problem, money? It could be that that is the Environment Agency thinking. But, but here is an interesting fact. Last year's flooding cost 2.3 million pounds just to clear up. Mostly that was the cost of running the pumps to get the water off the field back into the river. This year we know that it will cost more than that. The initial dredge that everyone has been asking for here has been costed by the Environment Agency at 4 million. Now no one believes that's a real figure. Uh, the Internal Drainage Board brought some people over from Holland last year and they costed it at around three million pounds. But the point is this, the cost of the dredge is four million, the cost of the cleanup as a result of not dredging is already five million. It, it makes no economic sense to be doing this. Do you feel you're being listened to now? We hope so, but we worry because we have heard this before. In April last year, uh, two government ministers and a local politician came to Langport and told us that something would be done. The waters were just going from the last flood, but what they said was we cannot tell you what will be done because there is an election in May. But after the elections, something will be done. So the elections came and went and nothing happened. So people around here have a right to be skeptical and cynical when they hear politicians talking. But now we have the Prime Minister going on record in Prime Minister's questions last week saying dredging will happen. That is encouraging. But then we have to ask, what does that mean? 
Does it mean a little dredge here, a little dredge there that just moves the problem a little upstream, a little downstream? Or is it the proper root and branch dredging that we want to see with the whole river system being cleaned out and then properly maintained for years to come? At the moment, all we know is that the Prime Minister thinks dredging is a good idea. He does not even tell us where the money is coming from to get the dredging done. Is there not even a bigger problem? You talk about water management neglect, but uh, climatologists expect that there's going to be more rain in the future. So structural things have to change, maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe so. Uh, we have a, a lot of issues to think about uh, as a country that these floods ask questions of us. Uh, where do we grow our food? This is some of the best farmland in England. Now, if we are happy as a nation to import our food, to add food miles to the food that we pick up in our supermarket, to have our asparagus from Peru, our beans from Kenya, fine, so be it. Then maybe this will have to return to a natural landscape. But the very people who are telling us they don't want to dredge, that it's bad for the environment, are the same people who don't want food miles, who want to see food grown locally and grown in an environmentally friendly fashion. Now, you can't have both sides of this argument. You must choose. If, in the long term, people want to come to the population of the levels and say, actually, it is not sustainable for you to live here, well, there needs to be some kind of process, some kind of democratic process to discuss what happens next, compensation for those who will lose their houses or their livelihoods, and some common understanding of how we go far forward from here. At this point, we don't have any of those things. We just have a, a few uh, empty words from people in the Environment Agency saying, oh, well, let's just let it go back to nature. That's just a silly remark. It's not a sensible proposition. Uh, but yes, perhaps in the long term, that is the end product of the process we will see.